Hey everyone, it's Casey from the Boyd County Public Library and welcome to our virtual summer reading program. Uh, we've got new programs every Tuesday at 2 p.m. so be sure to tune in for those. But today I'm going to be showing you how to do silhouette paintings. I've got a couple examples here. This one's a bit more advanced but still super easy to do. Here's another one. So what I'm going to be teaching you to do is paint that night sky and keeping with the theme of imagine your story, the silhouette is going to be 100% up to you. I'm going to be showing you how to do cats because that's the easiest thing for me to paint. It's my favorite thing to paint, but it's really up to you. Anything you can imagine, you can paint a silhouette of. It's super easy because you don't have to paint any intricate details, just the outline, fill it in with black, and you're done. So be sure to be logging those hours for our summer reading program to win tons of cool prizes. And let's get started. So I did go ahead and speed up this video just a little bit, um, just so that it's not so long. But we'll go ahead and dive in here. What I'm doing is I am using an old takeout lid as my palette, which is a really good way to use what you have laying around at home. You can use a paper plate, you can use pretty much anything as your palette. And I'm mixing some blue, purple, and white to make the base color for our sky. I'm mixing that with my paintbrush. Um, you don't have to use anything special to mix paints. I know some people use toothpicks, some people use the end of their brush. I just use the brush um, to mix the paints together. I feel like it gets a more even mix. So I'm mixing that together and then I'm going to lay it down on the canvas as a first coat. Now the first coat is not going to be perfect. It's basically just to get the color down. So if it's splotchy, don't worry. We're going to go ahead and go over that with a second coat once it's dry. Now you will notice here that there's a little bit of a cut in the video. Um, what I did was I paused the recording and I went in and I took a hair dryer to the canvas. I did this so that the paint would dry faster and I didn't have to wait um, for each layer to dry. I really recommend this if you want your painting to not take all day. Um, you just hit it with the hair dryer on full heat and wait for the paint to become matte. When it's not shiny anymore, then it's dry. There will be a couple shiny spots, but that's okay. Um, as long as it's mostly dry, you can go in with your second coat.
So you can see here what I've been doing is just laying down that second coat of blue just to make sure everything's opaque. If it doesn't come out perfect, you can just wait for it to dry and add another coat. You can really add as many coats as you want as long as they're dry in between each layer. You don't want to put wet paint on top of wet paint just because it can get kind of gummy. And then what you see me doing here is just tracing out a rough circle. That is going to be the shape of the moon. So I mixed some white paint with some black paint to make gray, but for the first few layers of the moon I go in with pure white. Now white is a little bit difficult to paint with in the sense that it, you're going to need several layers. Um, it doesn't really come out super opaque over dark colors, which our background is pretty dark, so that's why it takes so many layers to uh, get this moon opaque. But as long as it's dry, like I said before, you can add as many layers as you want. So you can see I'm just filling this circle in with white paint roughly to put down the base of the moon. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect like I said. It's art so nothing really has to be perfect. Um, just go in there, get your first thin layer on, wait for it to dry or dry it with the hair dryer and just keep adding layers until you're happy with the color of the moon and then eventually you'll go in with some gray just to kind of add some shading and dimension to the moon if you look up in the sky the moon isn't perfectly white so that's why I add in some gray it's just to give it a little bit of depth and shadow
So you can see here I actually didn't let that last layer of white dry um, before I added the gray and that is just so that it blends easier. Blending is pretty easy when the paints are still wet so I just go in almost semi-circle movements around the edge of the moon towards the middle to add that gray just to add some shadow and depth as I mentioned before and it really shouldn't be too hard um, if you don't let the paint dry in between that last white layer and the gray layer. It should blend seamlessly. So now I'm actually going to take a Tupperware lid and I'm going to put that over top of the moon that we painted and that is just to protect it because I'm going to use that toothbrush, I'm going to dip it in the white paint and I'm going to splatter it. I'm going to splatter the white paint all over the canvas and this gives the effect of stars. It's a lot easier than painting each individual star and it looks a lot more realistic because all stars aren't the same size and when you splatter your paint it doesn't come out all the same size so as you can see I'm just using my finger and splattering that paint all over the canvas this is a really fun part of the painting and you can do as few or as many stars as you want So I'm removing that lid and letting the stars dry and then I'm going to take a piece of paper and I'm going to trace about a quarter of the way up the bottom of the canvas and I'm going to draw a straight line across. I'm going to fill that in with black paint and that's going to create our foreground for your silhouette to be sitting on. So now you can see, um, it's kind of hard to see on camera, but I am using a pencil and I'm just lightly sketching the cat. Now this is where you get to be as creative as you want. You can draw literally anything that you can imagine. Um, I'm just doing a cat because cats are my favorite animals, they're my favorite thing to paint, but you can do really anything. You can do a house, a castle. Um, a dragon, a person, you know, really anything that you can imagine. Just draw the outline and you can even trace the outline. Um, so I've done that before. When things are too hard to freehand, it's really acceptable to just trace it. So you can see I'm starting by painting the outline and then just filling it in with black paint and that's what you're going to be doing with your silhouette.
Now you can see here in the next part that I start to paint a tail. I actually decided that I didn't like the tail and whenever I was originally filming this I actually thought that I was just going to restart the entire video. But then I kind of thought that I would leave it in and just show you how easy it is to fix your painting if you mess up. It's really not the end of the world. I just took a piece of paper towel and wiped off the wet paint. It's going to smudge a bit, but that's okay. And then I just went over it with that gray and white paint and just made it match the rest of the moon. So if you mess up, it's not the end of the world. You just go back over it, as many layers as you need to to go over it, and just fix it. It's You can change your entire painting if you want to. Um, mistakes happen in art and it's really not the end of the world. So here I'm just outlining the bottom of the cat and the tail with white just to show where the tail and the bottom of the cat are just to finish this painting up. Now we're going to be doing more um, programs every Tuesday. Thank you for watching and um, if you do follow along with this tutorial, please post the results in the comments. I'd love to see your art. Um, have a good summer and I'll see you next time.